huge falls on markets overnight. A lot of this is also being felt now in emerging markets in this part of the world. How much of this really worries you? Of course, uh, there are so many concerns about uh, Fed policies, about trade uh, tensions and other issues, uh, sanctions and others. But at the same time, of course, uh, the U.S. Uh, stock market uh, hit a uh, record high recently. And uh, it's, uh, in a sense, booming. Uh, employment rate is lower. That's why Fed uh, wants to raise the interest rates. So it's uh, overall a good uh, situation in the United States. And of course, uh, there are some worrying uh, uh, past, uh, things. But at the same time, in Asia, the, we have uh, enjoyed uh, very solid growth uh, over years, even after the global financial crisis. Uh, the, this year's number for developing countries, excluding uh, Korea, Taipei, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, is 6.5%, uh, uh, according to it, It's not bad. It's not bad, mm. but we see money coming out of the emerging market space in this part of the world, and it continues to do so. Yeah, but uh, it's not so simple because uh, money is invested in the, these countries because of higher interest rate, higher return on the equity investment and so on. And uh, this kind of uh, volatility happened uh, when there was announcement of a tapering off in 2013, uh, which are uh, uh, called uh, now uh, tap, uh, tapering uh, tantrum. Or do you think this is the but same kind of environment? Yeah, it was uh, mitigated uh, right. later. So, of course, there are so many concerns. But, of course, the uh, trade dispute, if it is uh, escalated, it would have a very negative impact on the sentiment of consumers and investors. But at this moment, it's not as bad as... But, but you know the causes why, and the causes are partly these trade tensions, in fact a large part of them, and the endangerment mm. of the multilateral global system. Mm. How close are we for that breaking down now? What is important is uh, not uh, too disruptive. And, but we should uh, have a sometimes, uh, from time to time, certain adjustment to the multilateral system. Multilateral system is not perfect, and we should try to manage it and adjust it to the reality. Well, how can we manage it and adjust it when you've got the biggest player in the financial system not wanting to play ball, essentially? Uh, I shouldn't uh, maybe make a, a very political comments, but of course, uh, the trade, uh, free trade system and the investment between countries have been uh, most important uh, kind of uh, engines for growth in these uh, several decades in Asia and also in the world. So we should keep it. But how to adjust it if uh, there is uh, some uh, necessity of adjustment? Okay, but you know, you, there's a lot of talk from finance ministers, mm -hmm. including the one here in Indonesia, mm -hmm. saying that the global policy coordination mm -hmm. is required to help shield emerging markets from Fed rate hikes and at the same time the strength of the dollar. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, of course. And we, we have been doing that. The, the IMF has uh, uh, been more equipped with the, those uh, buffers and the support to these affected countries. ADB has been always supporting these countries when there is a kind of uh, the constraint or uh, strains. And uh, so there is a more, I mean, better equipped uh, than uh, before the Asian crisis or before uh, the global financial crisis. So it's in a better position now, this I part think of the so. world. And also I'd like to stress that for for instance, in this country, Indonesia, uh, it, the depreciation of currency is happening. But if we look at the current account deficit and uh, the budget uh, deficit, those are like 2.6% of GDP. It's not very large. These countries must borrow money from abroad to invest. So in the old, uh, no, normal time, it's quite okay. But, uh, uh, because, uh, this is a common thing. People say, okay, depreciating currency helps. Uh, uh, but it's only a short-term fix, isn't it, ultimately? Because if it, a depreciating currency did help in the longer term, Zimbabwe would have revealed the yeah, richest country in the world. Uh, but I'm not talking about depreciation. Depreciation is overblown. That's what I want to say. If we look at the current account deficit, fiscal deficit, it's not so much. So uh, this uh, depreciation is, uh, I would say, more speculative than uh, well-grounded. Okay, let's talk a little bit about yourselves and how the ADB has been working with the AIIB. Is this a relationship which is deepening? Of course, it is uh, very uh, close, and uh, I have had a very good discussion with um, uh, President Jean uh, more than ten, 10 times, and we have uh, co-financed uh, for four projects, but uh, we want to do it more.
Okay. But Japan and China also perhaps coming together with some infrastructure development products mm -hmm. in, in countries such as Thailand. Mm -hmm. Can the ADB get involved with that of too? Of course, uh, we have been involved in the uh, co-financing with the uh, Japan's. Uh, JICA, uh, that is an uh, aid agency, and uh, JBIC, uh, that is export credit agency. And we have been, uh, as I said, uh, co-financing with the uh, AIB. So if uh, we uh, co uh, combine together, we can make uh, even more difference. But what is important is we should care the debt sustainability of countries. They are already borrowing so much. So how we can manage the debt level of uh, countries is an uh, issue for us and for them. Kasan, on a final note, what is worrying you the most? Of course, uh, what uh, is worried most is, of course, in, in the longer term, uh, what is the impact of aging population, health cost, and urbanization, remaining poverty, gender equality. But at this moment, of course, uh, I want that the trade uh, frictions, the uh, dispute between countries will be uh, dealt with the, uh, with the very reasonable ways. And that is uh, what I want. And the friendship, uh, cooperation between countries is the basis of growth in Asia, in any uh, region of the world. We should keep it.